Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect. Today, oh boy, today we're going to be building some airships and uh, getting some things done. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, I have some big plans for today's episode. Man, oh man, I, I really want to add to this island. It's episode 40. We are really pushing, like, the episode limit here for me. Um, but I do want to get this done. There's still a lot we have left to do. And several more episodes. This actually might end up being one of my longest running series on my channel, which is going to be absolutely crazy. But anyways, uh, I do appreciate all the support you guys have been giving on these videos. It really does mean a lot to me. So today we are going to be building this thing off. And uh, also at the end of today's episode, if you're interested, link down in the description below. If you want to become a Patreon, you can get access to this world download. Uh, you'll find that uh, down on the uh, Patreon link down in the description below. Um, any tier will get you access to that download link. So it's super awesome. Um, but guys, let's go ahead and dive into this. This is uh, this is what I want to do. So let's talk a little bit about this down here. I did go ahead and upgrade these machines. Uh, this is about as far as I can go without getting into diamonds and stuff. You can take these up to the advanced level. So if you take a look, right here gets us the advanced tier. Um, so not this right here. Let's take a look at this. So say the crusher, for example, uh, we just add this around it, it turns it to the basic. Then we can just add this around it and turn it to the advanced. Now the advanced is just the enriched and, uh, the basic control circuit. So all of this can be done when done. You get a one, two, three, four, five, a five times crusher, and you get a five times smelter. Uh, this is going to bump it up from 20 RF tick to hundred RF tick. But basically, this is like having five machines in one. Yes. And so things are running. Um, of course, they are still going to lag behind. Now, what I can do here is change this up. Now, some of you guys are like, oh, yeah, you don't need this block right here. Well, I mean, I, I, I understand that. I just wanted to show it for an example. Um, what I will do, though, is I will set up a chest and utilize this pipe. I want a buffer chest in here. So this will output to this buffer chest. So we have all of our crushed stuff here. And then I want to route some pipe along the top, right? So logistics pipes, let's go ahead and do this. Just like so. And then we need to set this to accept input onto the top, just like that. We'll get our configurator and this will allow us to pull out of the chests, just like so. So once this has room in it for other things, we can of course go ahead and do that. But as you can see right now, this just allows that crusher to continue to work so we get all of our materials here nice and crushed up and stored in this chest for deposit over here. Right, um, so now it's, it's not so horrible. Other than the fact that some of you guys don't like the fact that it's not centered, you know what? It, it wasn't gonna be centered anyways. I made this two by two and you know, sometimes controlled chaos is the best way to do things. So, you know, it is what it is. So before I get into building, I do want to, uh, to try a couple of things. Uh, so I have used this handy bag before this thing is absolutely insane i love it uh but we do need to make ourselves an ender chest to do that we just need an an obsidian chest apparently and then surround that by biotite and we get ourselves an ender chest very simple and then we create this now this gets us a handy bag so when we open up our inventory it's huge it's absolutely huge we have these sidebars we have all these extra extra buttons these memory card slots what does all this do this is like a incredibly large storage system in our inventory it's it's insane it can auto pick up items it can do all kinds of cool stuff you can change the mode so when you shift items into it and out of it you can hit double shift uh and it will convert the mode so you don't shift items in here accidentally there's all kinds of crazy stuff you can do but we are going to need memory cards so if we go into ender utilities you can see we have the memory card here um i think i think i should have a little bit more maybe i kind of uh Overshot that. Let's get some Ender Pearls and our Biotite. And throw this over here. Actually, I did make some. There we go. Perfect. I was like, I thought I made some. So we're going to get two memory cards here. That's going to be plenty for me. I don't think I'm going to need that many. Uh, because I'm going to show you. This right here is one inventory slot. So if I put an item in here, you can see that stores there. If I put this memory card over here and I toggle to this side, you can see that item is gone. Because this actually stores like an entire inventory here worth of stuff in each of these memory cards and these memory cards I believe increase these total stack size of the item so you could have like uh, 256 cobblestone in one slot 
uh, depending on the memory card you're using. Um, as you can see right here, it does say can store items in stacks up to two times bits equals 64. So this basically just stores uh, one stack. As far as I know, I think that's what it is. Um, and so you can just increase that by upgrading memory card. Now, another thing I want to make is this bad boy. This is a living matter manipulator. This will let us pick up mobs. I know, it's kind of weird. Uh, we also need a memory card. So this. So it looks like I, I will need to go ahead and take our Biotite and throw that over here. <laughs> looks like I'm going to need to farm up some more Ender Pearls, which, I mean, is honestly not a big deal either. Uh, so back to the Ender mod here. This is pretty cool. Uh, we are going to need a table to upgrade this machine. Um, let's take a look here. Adjustment storage unit. That's not what it is right here. The tool workstation. So the tool workstation is, of course, going to require another one of these. Let's grab that. There we go. And this is the tool workstation. This is how we're going to apply our uh, blank memory card or miscellaneous memory cards to this thing. So let's go ahead and just drop this down right here. There we go. And if I put my uh, tool in here, you can see we have some slots. I am just going to go ahead and fill this up all the way. And bam, we have ourselves what is called an LMM. <laughs> Living Matter Manipulator. And what we can do with this is we can like actually pick up multiple mobs with it. And disperse those mobs back on the ground. And we can pick up quite a few mobs. Um, it's, it's kind of insane. So if you want to pick up like 15 sheep, you can pick up 15 sheep. I think it holds like 16 mobs or something like that. And uh, it's just it's just a good tool overall to have on you and to use. Now, it's not the only thing. There's also some bags that will let us pick up some stuff. But there's also other things for mechanism that will let us pick up things. Um, apparently, there is a bag um, right here, Ender bag, I believe, that will let us pick up stuff. Does it currently work with other inventories? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, this is there, there's a whole bunch of different stuff that you can do. So at this point, I think I have enough wool to start our airship build. And uh, what I want to do is I want this to be the, the rear of the uh, the ship. Basically, I consider that like the propellers. Um, and I want this end to be the front of what is going to be our island. Um, so basically, I want to have some balloons that are pretty much going to go like right here on the side of this. And same on the other side. And ultimately, that's kind of what I want to show, like it's supporting this uh, this build. I could have done like a, a bunch of like smaller balloons, but I think like having like two big balloons would really fit the idea of this being back here, almost looking like it's propelling the uh, the our like little ship through the uh, the air, which I think I think is kind of cool. So without further ado, of course, let's go ahead and uh, you know roll the time lapse. It's an adventure world that we are creating, using our brain to get any way we can. So we tell these stories.
I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse. Of course, we only have one done. Well, we need to kind of copy it over to this side. So I did went ahead and destroyed the one we had over here, but we're going to use the um, Direwolf 20's building gadgets to hopefully be able to get this job done by copying and pasting. I want to show you how to use the pasting gadget or the copying and pasting gadget. It's actually pretty cool. And uh, we should be able to save uh, this blueprint and all kinds of cool stuff. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm, I'm currently working on getting that done. So what I have over here is some construction paste and I went ahead and placed it inside of a hydrator. You just need to fill this with water. Um, so like any of your like uh, blocks that you need to place near water can be placed in here. Now, once this is done, I need to throw this dense stuff into here to get some uh, chunks of it. That should break it down. As you can see, dense construction chunks. Let's go ahead and take that uh, because we're going to need this to actually make the building gadget. It's not super simple, right? So the regular gadget is going to be this. And of course, it requires a wolf pelt for a dire wolf. Um, and it also has some wands, which of course, because this is a building tool and some batteries, of course, to hold the uh, the actual power itself. Um, we're going to need this thing for the copy and paste gadget, which is going to require the construction paste, some paper, um, some compressed cobblestone. Yes, two times compressed cobblestone. <laughs> All surrounded by this thing. And uh, which we should have. If not, of course, I can go mine some. Um, but this should be pretty simple to make. The only thing is we just have to get all of this put together. So let me grab all the stuff and let's get this going. So I just spent a little bit of time figuring this out. So if you get stuck in the same situation, you'll kind of figure out how this works. But you can't actually charge these batteries normally. So our normal battery charging situation is not working. So you do need to use a energy storage module from Galacticraft. And um, I went ahead and the cables over here... And unlike all the other machines, the left side's not where you power, the right side's your power. So um, I went ahead and, and placed it here. Now you just throw your battery in and then that will charge up. And same goes for this. And we're actually gonna need fully charged batteries in order to actually make the building gadget itself, as you can see here. Um, that's our only thing I'm waiting on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these done as I had to figure out what I needed to use to charge these bad boys. And that should be about it. And there we go. There's our building gadget. Now this will charge up based off of our wireless charging, but uh, that currently wouldn't. So to get compressed cobblestone, right? This is just, uh, can we compress? Oh, wow. Okay. Wait, what is the copy and paste tool using? Two times compressed. So to make two times compressed, do we have to use this? The quantum compressor for this? Wait, is this another tier higher than what we... Wait a moment. We have an elite. What? What? I don't understand why this is so expensive. So, I can't believe how expensive that is. But at least we have a, a building gadget, I guess. I don't know. This is going to require way more stardust than I currently want to make at the moment. Um, and I don't have a better way of doing it. I mean... Blood magic has a way, but still, that's even kind of tedious. Um, I want to switch gears. Let's maybe try and copy it with RF tools. This is another way we can do it, and this is actually a cheaper way. Um, making these space chamber blocks is not going to be difficult, and we do have all the plastic to make every single one of these pieces that we need. Um, I just, I, yeah, I basically just need the dye, and I think blue dye I, I should have, right? We can get this from Lapis. So... Let me just take some lapis. I'm going to go ahead and get some of that crushed up. Um, get our materials pretty much ready to go. And uh, I'll show you how to copy things with RF tools. It's, it's not that difficult uh, to do. So once we get this set up, all we got to do is make sure we have on, enough items for this. Um, and then I'm also going to need to maybe take some cobble, for example. And I just want to outline this and get the four corners set up because we're, we're going to basically need a corner that is going to make sure it encompasses this entire build. So from top to bottom, basically we need a square around this thing. And that will basically define all four corners of this build, as you can see, just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this whole thing basically in cobblestone <laughs> to define these corners. And uh, 
we'll uh, get the, the other blocks made. So the things we're gonna need is gonna be a space chamber controller block and four space chamber corner, actually, no, three space chamber corners. I actually made one extra, didn't mean to do that. Um, but we're also gonna need a space chamber card and we're also gonna need a wrench. So RF Tools has this thing called the Smart Wrench. And we're gonna need to utilize this. Plus we're also gonna need a builder. So I already made that, that actually, the recipe is, is actually a lot. This is why it just blows me away that how expensive the actual copy tool is. Um, it's just kind of, kind of crazy. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this set up. So the space chamber, basically we're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, we're gonna need a few more machines than I actually thought we were going to need. So technically we need, let's see, one, we need one for each corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need seven space chambers. So I wasn't, I wasn't behind. I didn't make too many. I need seven of these. So let's just go ahead and make seven of them. I think I might have enough. So we have four, five, six, seven. That should leave us with just enough. There we go, now we have enough. So one of these is gonna be the controller block. I'm gonna go ahead and place the controller up here. And then we can go ahead and place the rest of the space chambers. I went ahead and set these blocks one block away from where I currently wanted it to be. There we go, we'll space these out. It's so funny, we saying, we're saying space them out when, you know what, Never mind. <laughs> we hit this with a smart wrench and it says not a valid chamber space. Um, that could be many different reasons because we have one of these off, for example. Um, I hope I had this set up right. Let's go over here. Ah, it's this one down here. This one's off. So yeah, you need to make sure that they are at least set up the same distance away from each other. You notice how this one is definitely not in that space, so we need to move it over one. And then that should hopefully fix the problem. So if you encounter that issue, not a valid chamber space. We just need to double check again, make sure everything is lined up. It does seem like this might not be lined up. That's lined up. This is lined up. That's lined up. All right, now I'm trying to figure out why this is not working. Let me do some debugging here. So for a little bit of time, I think I found out what the problem was. Uh, did I just lose my... I think I just lost a chamber, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, so I'm gonna have to make another one because that one just definitely went right into the void. Anyways, this right here, we should be good. I think I just gotta place this one right here. That should line up now. Everything's lined up. Unfortunately, like the cobblestone just was not lining up. And it says chamber successfully created. Okay, good. Good, good, good. That means I can, of course, get rid of all of this cobblestone. Wow, that is super satisfying. And that guy is throwing some lingering potions. All right, we can go ahead and clean some of these mobs up. Of course, this later on will, uh, will not be a problem. All right, so we should be able to create this. And then we take this card and we click the card onto here and it's gonna see save to channel one. And what we can do is we can take our builder and we should be able to hook our builder up, um, particularly with like our RF tools power. So let's go ahead and hook up some RF tools power. We're gonna make another uh, power cell and then we can make another power cell card. I hope this works. <laughs> I mean, because seriously, it's a pretty decent replacement for the uh, the very, very expensive copy-paste gadget. Oh my, I can't believe, I still can't get over how expensive that, that tool is. That's crazy. Anyways, let's head into here, and we need to link. There we go, so that way we have a link card. And of course, we can go ahead and place this down and place it in the link, and thus have some storage there. And then we can place this next to our um, RF Tools Builder, and this is gonna get going. Now, what I should be able to do is place our Space Chamber card in here. It's set to copy, and then I wanna show the support view. So right now, this is the support view, and I wanna change where this is currently located. 
Um, and we can, of course, adjust all of this stuff by changing its offset. So let's just move its offset by 15, for example. And then we can adjust that. That should have moved it over a little bit. I don't know exactly where its, uh, its offset is placing it. So let's see, offset. And actually, is that going to change its offset? Let's open this up. I don't know if we can uh, we can change its offset. That seems to be exactly where it's going to place. Let's change this to 50. That would at least show some movement. No, that's not moving at all. Okay. So we need to get this, I mean, to a position that is a little bit better. Maybe like something that's positioned right here. Is that kind of where it seems to be located? I think the bottom of this is actually... Like, it's at the bottom back here. It's, like, located from where we're currently positioned. Support view. Why is this support view changing? Interesting. So, yeah, I think this is going to work perfect. So, I went ahead and just bridged this over. So we were setting at the same height and it does look like this is going to put this at exactly the same height that it currently exists. But I think we might have missed the bottom block here. Actually, I don't know. I can't tell if the bottom block is being accounted for or not. Hmm. That is something that I'm kind of curious about. If so... Like, this should technically be that top portion. Hmm. I guess we're going to find out as we get to, to working on this. I don't know if this encompasses some of the stuff, but we're going to find out once we start to build this thing. So what we're going to need is a chest. And we can go ahead and just use a regular chest for this. Doesn't really matter. We're going to need a lever. And then we're going to need just some of the items that we use to build this thing. And this list should tell us all the different items. Um, if we take a look here, we need, we're going to need spruce, uh, a bunch of spruce slabs. So I might need to actually go in and, and you know, I, I can add these right now, but I know that it's going to need probably a bit more than what we currently have here. We're going to need a bunch of wool. So might as well grab a bunch of that. Because that is definitely one of the big parts of this. And let's see, spruce. Um, See, so yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and chop this out. Now, I do have a setup down here that does make this automatic for me. All I got to do is add the spruce into this block placer. And this automatically just starts harvesting this away for me. It's actually quite nice. So hopefully this is enough material. This should be some sort of wizardry that is about to happen. It says do a single run and stop. We can say keep running. Uh, with redstone signal right here um, because in just in case we miss some stuff let's go ahead and turn this on and it's interesting that those lights placed it actually copied those lights but there it goes it's actually building this out block by block it does look like it did miss the bottom and probably is going to miss the top but that's okay it's better than rebuilding this whole thing and messing something up. At least I know this is exactly block for block copying and pasting. Oh, you gotta love this. This is just satisfying to watch in itself. So I want to go ahead and get the last finishing touches on this airship here and I just want to hook up some of these anchors so what I'm placing down is this right here structural cable connector and then I have some steel cable core uh, steel cable coil if I could say that and what we can do is we can actually connect the cable like so where it actually looks like it's connected to these anchors that are actually connected to the the world itself just like this so it looks like this is sort of being held up over here. Sort of have the same deal I'm going to place on this one. I did go ahead and get the rest of it sort of decorated, as you can see. But this is this turned out pretty good. For something that, uh, you know, wasn't something super special at first, this is turning out to be pretty cool looking. I don't know. 
This is something that I was kind of wanting to do for a while now. So now it looks like we have an actual floating airship. Um, the only thing is, is we still have this like propeller in the front. But overall, it looks like it's being lifted by these giant balloons. And of course, eventually I want to get this area cleaned up up here. And uh, then we'll just have like an island that looks straight up like a floating steampunk ship. How cool is this? So as always, I want to, of course, give a huge shout out to one of my Patreons. And that is going to be a thanks to Carson Craven. Thank you so much for uh, for the support and going above and beyond and becoming a supporter. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, if you did, you know what to do. Be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also give this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. And if you have clicked that subscribe button, be sure to check if you've rang that notification bell, because you might be surprised that that notification bell button is not checked. So uh, by clicking that, you will be able to be notified right away on the latest videos post. So guys, be sure to also check out my other channel. It is youtube.com forward slash chosen live, where you can find me there and you can find all of my other content if you're interested. Guys, I hope to see you in the next episode, and as always, thanks for watching.